yeah so i've been told there's an interview that has been done by ali and uh let's see let's see what's here so this is actually the reaction video for this interview so i want to see how much truth and how much lies are in this story if it's true i will agree if it's a lie yeah there's a boom that you see in up here i'm copying the address on the youtube channel yeah the bobina zila ni mwana ni kim tafuta it's a quality visual sana to party her side of the story mambo Fiti sana. Ukupoa? Kabisa. Ah, asante sana kwa kuja. So, uh, naomba ujitambulishe. Naitwa Lilian ama Mama Dalola. Tulikutana na Obina the year 2011 na tukakuwa in a relationship. So for the year I don't remember, I'm not very good with dates, but I remember moments and action. So, the year kidogo I don't remember the specific year, but I remember how. Mpaka this year March. So your relationship yet to Emela this year March <laughs> Wow March January February March April May June July March Okay my last for 11 years Natalie. Okay that's a lie 11 years 11 <laughs> Okay So it's fine. Ishikwa moja for five years. Yeah. So uh no, first of all, five years in the same house is a lie. You know why? Because Lola just turned five the other day and uh yeah. Mlianza mlipo kwa kwa relationship mlianza kuishi pamoja immediately. No, tulianza kuishi pamoja after one year. Then nikapata ball. Vile nilipata ball Uh, tukaanza kusumbuana kwa nyumba uh, kuleta wasichana pale kwa nyumba nikienda job then nika find out ile kwa confront nikakuta nikapata shahama so si wow. aware kama ana hama but ali move out to yeah so by that wow yo okay so quick story okay this is very unnecessary But since it's getting petty, let's get petty. So first of all, uh, she was living in Umoja in a place called Peacock in a one room. I was living I was living with Owago and Tolo Tolo in South Bay River Bank. So I moved to I got a job at I think it was QFM or Nation. So I moved to Tena Estate in Umoja in a two bedroom. I was paying 15,000. So I asked her, since you are in Umoja Peacock, I'm in Tena Estate, move in. She moved into my house. All right? The story that made me move out of this house it was not even about women it was a picture that I had taken with size 8 I remember very well I was an intern I think at Q then as it came for an interview and then we did an interview I, I took a picture with her carrying her that night to cut a long story short I did not sleep Okay let me just address her that night you broke all the plates in the house You are hitting them on the wall. They are breaking. You broke all the windows. You broke everything. The only thing you did not break was the TV. It was a Sony Bravia. My TV. The one I told you don't touch this. And the reason that this story started was this. I got to the house. I was told, "Why were you carrying size 8?" I was like, "I just took a picture. It was just a picture." That time I was not even the level of size 8 was this big star. I was a nobody. So I got in the house. I sat down. I was watching TV she came took the remote switch of the TV. I was like, "Yo, why are you doing this?" I want to talk. I'm like talk about what this and this. I was like, "No, there's nothing that happening. I just took a picture." Then I remember big carrying Coralin, I left, I went to the bedroom. I got in bed. I pulled the blanket. I think we had a blanket or something. She came and moved the blanket. I left, went to the guest room. My brother was also in the same same house. She came to the guest room. I'm talking to you. You're going to talk to me. This day <clears throat> Can I say I was beaten up? <laughs> Because I remember the following morning I was starting my first episode of Break Time show. So this night it was too chaotic that night everything was broken in the house the glasses everywhere you could not even walk. That time I used to wear a lot of shambala as shambala was trending. She was taking shambala like this and throwing them in her mouth. She took a moxil and she swallowed them trying to commit suicide. Same, same person. That was the time when he did me, yo, you need out of this. 
and that's the time I decided I would leave. And I remember, because of course I know her buttons, I pressed the right buttons at around 4 in the morning. I slept, I think, for an hour or two, got up. She had the key. She had put the key in her neck like a bling bling. You could not take it. My brother could not touch. I could not touch. I had a cut here, and I had a cut here, and I had a cut here for glass. Because I remember when I went for break time shoot, we were shooting at, at Easily High, and Ekodida was the guest. And it was my first, they had a brown mohawk, so I, I, I was looking like a tag. I've just gotten this TV deal, the first TV deal. I'm going to do a major one. It's called Break Time Show. The makeup lady had to do makeup for me and cover all these marks. And no, this one we didn't because it was in a shot, yes, of course. But cover this one and cover this one. That's how I went to do the shoot the following morning. After having given the box, oh, you know, da 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 da, play a fool. But that's the time I decided I will leave. The way I left was simple. You know the way she says, I plan with Brian or do I plan with my brother. I called her to town for lunch. I told my bro, when we go to town, leave. She was smart. She brought her sister to the house. So we're in town. I told her, give me your phone. I put my SIM card uh, because I need to call someone because I needed to make sure her phone was off so she doesn't know I'm moving. At some point, we're in town. We're having this amazing date. And then she was like, no, just give me the phone. Give me, give me the phone. I need to check something. And then I gave her the phone. I remember we were at Nation Canteen with Brian. We were sitting on that orange seat. The big one is still there. Veteran house. I think it's fourth or fifth floor. She took the SIM card, put it on. The minute she put it on, a call came in. I think it was from the mother. And she picked and she wanted, and then she just turned around and told me, babe. And she started running. She got down the stairs. And me, I told Brian, oh, shit, I hit the fan. So what do we do? I told Brian, take me to Moja. We go see this. Brian said, no, go deal with your monkey. And <laughs> not my monkey, not my suckers. I left, went to Moja. I got to the plot and I found drama. My brother was about to beat him up. They said he was, he was a thief. He was stealing things. And I was like, yo, this is my house. These are my things. I'm moving out. I remember there were no men. Maybe there was one man in the plot that day. There was no, there was no men. It was full of women like this. I was held like this in front of everybody. Remember this is my house. I bought everything. And then, you know, women, of course, Kelele, the mother is there, the sister is there, my brother is there, cannot do anything. I told her, listen, I just want to leave. I just want peace. I don't want any issue. Remember, this is one of the major ones. We, we, we had a couple of other small ones that I'm not going to talk about today. Unless she talks about them, then I'll give you the perspective, the true side. Okay? So, what happened was, I remember my, my dad had warned me about Nairobi girls. And then I was warned about Kayole girls. I thought it was a joke. In the plot, I was being slapped like a baby. In front of everybody, I could not do anything. I've just started this new gig. It's break time show, Nini Nini. I'm trying to build a name for myself. I can't do anything. I'm just being pulled left, right, and center. I sit over there. We are downstairs. I, I used to live, I think, on the second floor. My clothes are down there and everything. And then I say, let me just take my clothes and everything. She was like, no, you're not taking anything from this house. So there's a friend who said, no, you guys, I was like, yes, Tango, 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 Chief. I got outside the gate. The gate is just next to Manyanja Road. It's just Manyanja Road. I got next to the gate, flagged down a, a motorbike. I sat on the motorbike. She jumped and sat behind me and then folded my clothes like this from the back, like this. Then I'm seated on the motorbike. I'm just telling the motorbike guy, take me to the chief's camp, please. And then she told the mother, Mom, kakwayo ingine analipa. Kakwayo ingine analipa. I remember this day fresh in my head. The mother sat on the other one. So I go to the chief. She's holding me like this. I'm holding them to the guy. Matusi napewa zote. The way I'm a useless fellow. I've done da 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 da. I'm just keeping quiet. We go to the chief. Then we solved the story. It was Umoja chief's camp. We solved the story. We wrote down. I was going to leave her the house with everything in it. Because she said, I bought all those things when I was with her. And I said, I'm leaving you with everything. The only thing I'm going to leave with was the TV. This TV was 32 inch that I bought. Uh, Jalas had given me an event in Mombasa for one week, story for another day. The first amount I think I was paid 80,000. The thing that I bought was the TV when I was staying with Akinawago. So I moved into this house with the TV and the TV stand. Those are the two things I left this house with in my clothes. Some of my clothes. We agreed, we wrote down everything. That document was torn, I think, less than, less than a year ago. And I was like, provided she just leave me at peace. And I said, I'll be paying rent and this is the amount I will give her. And this is what I would pay. There was an amount I was supposed to give her. I left the house. 
with the TV and the TV stand went to uh, Roy Sambu behind TRM when TRM was just being built. I bought the high school mattress, started life afresh. That is how I started in Roy Sambu, left her with the house and everything. So this story here is a lie. And by the way, that time when I was living, when, when I was being whooped, she was pregnant with Ada, of which it also came as a surprise. Anyway, story for another day. At the time, una jifungua ndikuwa muishi pamoja. Atu kwa tunaishi pamoja. So, vile nilijifungua, ndiyo after, after two years, ndiyo sasa tukarudiana tena. Yeah. Kwa huku isi ni pigumu sana kurudiana na mtu ambayo pengine alikuwa meku... Let me watch the speed, so the speed is a little bit... Uh... You know, uh, vile alirudi, alikuja kama mtu amebadilika alijifanya kama mtu mwenye amebadilika but okay. deep down i felt it was not right okay that's also a lie the way that i came back into her life i just started going to school the school was called Katsam. it was in umoja and i'd gone to look for the school for ada because ada was a little baby and ada used to go back home and ada would get home and say babangu aka iko meaning babangu yuko ama hayuko when she be told babako ayuko she would throw tantrums I would be called and I would talk to her on phone. I would be like, Mom, I'll come and see you. She'll wait for me sometimes or she'll go to the house. I would go all the way to Umoja, sit with Ada, sometimes do homework, play, eat food. And then when she black out is when I would leave. This is when the situation started happening again. It was not about pretending or, or anything. Right, but I believe in second chances. So, I can buy your chance. You can do then in the process, mtoto kufika three years, nikapata kwa lingine. Sasa still, naishi kwangu. So, uh, niki explain hiyo wa mimba ya da, alikuwa shaka pata job pale nation media. Na, nilikuwa naenda kumtafuta, ani support, cause nile nilipata ball. It... First of all, that's a lie, because when Ada was being born, I was already working at nation, because I remember even when I came to see you at the hospital, and then also the time that I was leaving, I was leaving the house, I was already working at Break Time Show. And the way I was working at Break Time Show, I was seen when I was already working at QFM. Because we went for the NDR party for Nation. And then the boss saw me do a, uh, something on stage. That is when he liked me and recommended for the Break Time Show, guys, give him the TV show. So already, I was already working. Wow. So first of all, eh? <laughs> rent. Now wait. Wow. Sawa. Good. First of all, outfits. I used to be dressed by a guy called AFS. He's the guy who sells shoes now, the kicks now. Anthony Fashion. That's the guy who used to dress me for break time show. And that's the guy that used to give me clothes and outfits. Did not dress me. Never, ever. Rent? No. I think the thing she's always, she's ever done was to refill gas. This time we used to live at River Bank with Owago and Uthul Uthul. That's the only notable thing that I remember that her money went to. But this other one, big lie. Really? So, ni kauna nienda ni mtafuta kwa mnione kama anaweza kunisaidia. Hiyo hata kama ni pesa kidogo, sina pesa ya rent, sijabai manguo za mtoto. Nikamtafuta akaniambia nikikaribia kujifungua, ata ata organize vile nita vile nitapata hizo vitu. Kufika kitu 6 months, akaanza kunitumia 5000 every month. Na si kwenye anaenda kujifungua, aliniwacha kabisa. Nilimcall from morning mpaka nikajifungua, akushika simu. Mimba ya ili mimba ya kwanza ya pili. Ya, mimba ya kwanza, akushika that's a lie. I didn't know she was going to deliver. I was not even in the picture. We were not even talking. When she had gone to deliver, I was called when she delivered. I think she called me and I rallied my boys. I remember I was with Bashka and someone else. I don't remember who the other person was. And we went to the to the hospital to see. That's the time when we got there to Kapata Meza to Kambiwa. I think like early morning or something. Because I remember that day, tulikuwa tumeji paka hizi marashi za kurifil. Bashka likuwa chiamano wa hizo barashi. Tukengia watoto wote wakaza kusinizi kwa, kwa hospital. Look at you, look at you. I remember that day very well. So, story at, oh, you bail nini. Okay, if I bailed, why was I going to the hospital to see the baby? Any story for another day. Kushika simu wata kidogo. E, badae, around, niliza 10, nilianza kumwa in the morning. Nika jipeleka hospitali. So, mzazi wangu wakampigia kitutu. Haka sema anakuja. 
So first of all, that's a lie. The mother never talks to me. Okay, let me not talk bad about the mom, so to watch a new story. Ndani, kama amejipaka marashi mingi, akiwa na friends wake, mbaka daktari wakaniambia, wakamuambia, waende watoe, zile manguwa wa ingietu, kama wana unuwaza juju, walikuwa mejipaka pa film mingi. That's a lie, we were not told to wende tutoe manguwa to Rudy. <laughs> we were just told, we were told to wende sneeze because of marashi. We didn't even manage to come back and look at the kids again, because the whole, uh, ni ward, watoto walikuwa na sneeze, so we didn't come back. Then watoa jengu wa ju, to Rudy bear chest. Aya. Akakuja, akawana mtoto, akafraia, wakapiga picha, akanyambia nenda kutafuta duyaku ni pabili ya hospitali, alafu, alafu watakuja. Even yo, wakina ali lost. That's a lie, because I remember giving her money, cash money. Because I remember, Bashka gave me some money, I had some money. I don't remember how much it was, but I gave her money at the hospital, because we were told not to come back because of the marashi. So the story I nikambia, na wakina nenda kutafuta mpesa wapi, yo ni Rudy. For three months. Hakuona mtoto kwanzia hiyo siku wila ni mwona kizaliwa mbaka mtoto wakafika 3 months. Na mbaka mnungia hizo 3 months? No. Mnungia tu unawana ukimtumia message ya Najib Rudli ama na ignoto. Hakuwa naongia. So vile niliza ule mtoto. Why would I reply Rudli if you text me about a child? Anyway. Haka wajibwa na shida kwa kichwa. Anataka kufanywa surgery. Sasa shida ilikuwa hapo. Ndiyo shida mimi sasa ilianza kabisa. Nikamweleza mtoto ni mgonjwa nafakwe na kufanywa surgery. Hakanembea badu anatafta loo. Ilichukua one year. Ndiyo hile pesa kwenye kufanya sajari. Ipatikane. Na haa kutowa. Nilikuwa na international center usiku mbaka nilikuwa na julikana na masoja. Nikisimama mlangu ya mbele, nyo ya natoka na mlangu ya nyuma. Ataki kuniona kapisa. Na anajua mtoto ni mgonjwa. Mbaka nikaenda kukua admitted matter. Ndiyo. Haka kuja. Uwe ni mwaka ukisasa. Iyo ni 2015. Na haka kuja kuniona. Alisikia tu kwamba mtoto alifanywa sajari. So nikaungia na mamangu tuka organize nile tutapata doya hospitali. Nikatua mtoto hospitali. Nikarudi job sasa. Mamu ikakua sawa. Nikamu back to moja. Life yangu ikakua fiti. That's a lie. Number one. Mtoto wakua na fafa nyo sajari ya kichwa. Ada had lymph nodes. Here and here. Of which house elf wake ndia likuwa mefanya adaka kwa mgonjwa. Alright? I took them to Mata Hospital. Tukafika Mata Hospital, kuna daktari ya lichukua shindano, haka ingiza hapa kwa ada, akijaribu kukoroga, ndia toe hiyo lymph node, they do test, they see what is happening. I remember ada crying, and I refused, karibu ni pagani, na o doktor, ni kakatani, kasema, no, 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 kama that's the solution, it's not gonna happen. Tuka toka Mata. I found money, I took them to Kijabe Hospital, where ada was done for a surgery here wakafungua wakatoa then they found what was happening then nadaka tibiwa so that story for matters you what is a lie look for a different one alafu sana karudi tukaanza kuongea kaniambia leche hii ni chance nyingine tukapata sasa hii ni chance the first chance tangu tukosane nikiwa na mimba so nikampea hiyo chance tuka tukarudiana nikiwa bado kwa nyumba yangu na usisahau pale nikiwa na mimba kuna mwingine bado alikuwa na mimba eh um, umsana naitwa Briana walizaliwa same time na ada but nikikatini nikikalculate eh, pregnancy yangu na ya mama yake ya mama yake iko mbele kushinda yangu but nimekaa kwa ile relationship sana so kuna possibility either alikuwa na ni cheat ama mimi ndio alikuwa ananitumia ku cheat yule mwingine nikiwa na mimba kwanza siku anajua kama kuna watoto okay this is how Briana situation happened when Ivon situation happened she was a, she was the rebound. She was there. Oh, you know, da 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 da. This time, I was no longer with Mama Brianna. Mama Brianna lost her job. She came for a shoulder to cry on. Brianna happened. <laughs> we were not even together, by the way. Yeah, yeah. That's how it happened. So, bila mimi mayangu inaenda kukuwa kubwa. At that time, I was hurting for what uh, the other ex of mine did. Yeah, yeah. So. Ndiwa na niambia, babe, na ujua nikona, nikona mtoto wanaenda kuzaliwa in the next five days. Nilishtuka, mbaka kachukua simu wakapigia ule msichana, nukonfam. Nukonfam kwamba kuna mtoto wanaenda kuzaliwa. Nikakata ni kweli mtoto wanaenda kuzaliwa, mtoto wakazaliwa. Uyo kienda kuzaliwa, kaniambia sasa na kuwanga na firstborn, kijana hako, hako around three years. Hako around, hako around hako. Two years. Jumu toto alizaliwa 2011 na bado 2011 nilikuwa kwenye relationship. 
mambo ikaendelea sasa hiyo tuko 2015 kuambiana vizuri nikarudi job yangu mambo ikawa sawa uh, kupata namba ya Lola that is 2016 ndio akaniambia anataka tu move pamoja but nika take time ile bado nafikiria kama ni ni right kweli juu ya zile vitu zenye zilini apenia na feel si sawa but kuna kitu tu ndani push ni niende niko na mtoto nikifikiria tena nili grow bila baba mtoto wangu atago through the same nikaona wacha tu wacha tu niende nijaribu so tukaingia tuka, nikazaa mtoto kwanza nikiwa baina ni mayangu siku mimi immediately nilikuwa na nimetakiwa time so nikaenda bado tukaishi pamoja after nimezaa mtoto akiwa some days ndio nilimove na yeye that is a lie when you was pregnant I said I've always wanted a family unit and I wanted all my kids together. And you asked me to move houses from Mutaiga to Pangani. I moved houses from Mutaiga to Pangani, where I used to live with about like five or six men in my house. So I had to kick the gentleman out so he can move in together as a family unit when you are pregnant. When you are going to deliver, I took you to the hospital. It was called a mouse hospital. It is in Umoja. And when Lola was being born, I was there throughout. And I remember. And every duty that a man does for rubbing your back and everything, I did that diligently. And when you gave birth, I was there and I saw Lola being born. And after that, I did not eat meat for a while because of that situation. I think that's why the bond with me and Lola is very... Because I was there from the word go. So this story that you gave birth and then you moved in. Na, 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 na. Mm -mm. Na. Uwe. So from there, Sasa, ndiyo matesa ikakuwa nyingi. After nimeza, bado alikuwa na kana, eh, sasa nimeza lola, wale watoto wengine tumejoin sasa tunakaa sisi sote pamoja. Na kumbuka, nilianza kuwa shana kuo. In the next five days, nimeza leo, nika count one, two, three, four, five, nika anza kujifanya kazi za nyumba. Na hile nyumba, kilikuwa tunaishina watu wengine, hakikuwa sisi peke yetu. Eh, hata kitu chukwe house gun. So, imagine mwana mki hamejifungua, Bado wewe ni unafanya kazi za nyuma, unamishwa sibi, amuka pika chai, amuka fanya hivi na hivi. But, hile tu, kukua kama African woman, inajikaza, na hivi kasonga, drama nizinakua tu, mara na cheese, mara kona hui huko, zote najua but, na ignore. Na sema bora leti hapa kwa nyuma, nisawa tu, maybe ni ukweli, maybe ni uongo. Sunajua sometimes masalepo na kena mwa vitu mingi sana, so zingine siku wana believe. Na uliwe kumuliza? Niki muliza, hakuwa na jibu, anatoka na ena. Na kwanza kufiuliza, ee, eh, mtu fulani ya menidiema, meniambia hivi na hivi, ya naniambia, sitaki kusikia, nilisha kwambia toka kwa social media, sitaki kusikia. Kama unaenda kusikiza maneno uwe kuwa hati peke yako, hakuna mtu wana kukushu. <laughs> I wish all the house helps we've had, that this lady has mistreated, this lady has beaten up, this lady has assaulted, this lady has fired aimlessly. This lady has tortured, would come out and talk. Please, come on, why to find your kazi and nyumba? And you're watching this video. If you can comment below it, the better. If you can figure out a way to find these guys who are doing these interviews and do your own interview and give them your version of events of her, please do so. Aki mutakome nisa idea. Sitaki tuandike hausel. Someone has just delivered a newborn baby. <laughs> it's fine. Remember, I have my two other kids from my previous relationship. You have other, then you have the newborn. So in short, you're taking care of four kids and you are manuro. <laughs> Until, hiya mwisho ilikuwa 2019, kuna mwanamuke alikuta kwa nyumba, haka niambia, alimunulia viatu from US, na wamekwa sana, anataka zile viatu zake. Mwanamuke ilo alimunulia wakati? Eh, Heye ndi alimunulia, alimunulia zile viatu, na anazitaka. Nika muliza, umenijua aje, haka niambia, wosi dali vile nimekujua, but eh, nataka viatu zangu. Nika muliza, so ni kupatia viatu, siju mmejuliana na huyu mtu wapi, Ni fia kweli, ni kieta ni chukwe kitu ya mtu, si yangu, sijumu ni juliana wapi, labda ni biyashara, ni biyashara ili gorong, ni ta kupatia jithi yatu za mtu mingine. Ni kamambia, unless, kuwe ready ku open up, yo, ni ta kupatia zile biyatu. Haka nambia ba? So this story, I was also told, I don't know if it happened, or it never happened. I was told, there was no, I was told, oh, there's, I'm like, huh? Who has come where? 
This, I remember it was during COVID when I'd moved to Tindigua so I could house my brother because during COVID, work stopped and everything. So I told my brother, come back to my crib. Then I moved to Tindigua to a bigger house, which is more affordable and more manageable. So my brother can also find his room for his privacy. During that time is when this situation she's saying here happened. I don't know if it happened. I've never been shown evidence. I was just told and I was like, okay, you could have called me or something. Nothing ever happened. Mia basi ni tako pigia jioni, tuka jioni kafika around seven ule dema kani kono, kani amia, ame baya ubina viatu za ninety thousand na namudai fifty thousand na nazitaka wali kosana. Viatu za ninety thousand, yo. Hey, we, haya ya ni meva rent kwa mugu, ninety thousand. Okay, the most expensive shoes that I have were Christian Laboutines or Laboutines. I don't know how much they costed, but they were a gift I was given by a friend of mine who used to work in a very reputable company, but he's, he's a man, so slow down. Those are the most expensive shoes that I had. I realized Obina was a man and was a wife. So I realized that a wife was a man. Okay, so first of all, I've never had a wife, I was never married, we were never married, and I was never intending to get married, and she knew it, and I told her, yeah, it was unity, remember, I want the kids together, let them be together, I'll take care of everything together, I was never married, so that's why if you want a wife, uh -uh, you are never my wife, so please, calm down your titties. So ni kama biapo misiyesi kukusaidi ya mutafute tuwe pani mlikutana uchukwe vitu zako From there, sasa tukakuja 2020 Kamuliza pipu suyo? Kumuliza kaniambia nilisha kukataza Hii mda yote nimekanae Hanunuliangi watoto manguo Ni mimi tu This video has a lot of jump cuts, yeah? This video has a lot of jump cuts It's not free flowing like Okay, anyway, editors will know Dragon, niuze vitu zangu online Nipate pesa kidogo. Kama mzazi, sifurahi kuona mtoto wangu wanatembea. Aki wanakaa vibaya, nilichagua mimi nikaa vibaya na watoto wangu wawe wako sawa. Hii nikisema watoto wangu na manisha wale watoto wote wane. Hakuna siku moja. Obina niwai nipea pesa. Ama haka, enda kwa duka, haka nunua manguo. Mbaka nilikuwa na mshita kiko wazazi wake, nikimuambia, wamuongelesha nunulia watoto manguo. So quick side story, anytime I would buy clothes for the kids, I used to be told these clothes are too small or these clothes are not trendy and I was being told, give me money, I go and buy kid clothes for the kids because I'm the one who knows where to buy clothes for the kids. There's a lady in Pangani, how I wish, just opposite Pangani Heights, the place where I used to buy chicken. And there's a lady who sells clothes there. That is where I used to buy clothes for the kids. And I used to go there and I'm like, okay, give me this and this and this for this year, this year. That's where I used to buy clothes. And I was being so mad. I was going to go and say, what you buy? I was going to buy money. I was going to buy money. I was going to buy money. But according to this story, my parents were being called. So I can be told to buy clothes. I was going to buy money. I was going to buy money. Nikupatia doa wende ubai. Iyo siku ikifika, na mwambia, eh, nikona doa kitogo waka, siu ni ongeza zingine niende ni bai. Hana niuliza, iyo doa umeiona wapi. Ukona doa kitogo umetua wapi? You are jobless. Since you gave birth until this time, you are living in the house. You are, I was paying everything. You didn't have a job. I opened for you five businesses of which uliangusha. I opened for you a butchery. I opened for you a movie shop. I opened for you a hotel. I opened for you a clothes shop of which I bought that sh clothes shop with everything intact, too expensive, and I even remodeled it. And I opened for you a bar. You and your mother. And everything went and disappeared and scattered. I don't know where all those money went and where those things went. Wow. <laughs> So ni kaendele tu kubaya watoto manguo na vitu zingine kidogo kidogo mpaka last year 2021. Ndiyo ni basikia ni mechoka. Iyo ni around November. Siyezi kuwa na angangana na nunulia watoto manguo na wabu umejaza manguo kwa closet mpaka unafanya giba we na watoto wako wawana. It's very unfair. Yeye amejaza manguo kwa na viatu more than 70 pairs 
First of all, I've never had shoes more than 70 pairs because I'm always giving away some of the shoes. And also, it's impossible for the kids to wear Crocs in Meraruka. <laughs> okay, Crocs in Meraruka, I think. It's fine. Nikasikia hapo nimechoka. Nikastop nikamwambia, eh, siku mwambia hata nikanyamaza, nikaendelea kubai vitu zangu chini ya maji zingine na ficha zenye ninahitaji, but nikastop kubai zile manguo. So bila nilistop, hapo ndio vitu zilibadilika. Nikanemiwa the bad step mother. Kwa sababu niliacha kununua zile manguo. Niliacha kununua zo, kwa watoto wote ama kwa hao wengine? Kwa watoto wote niliacha kununua. But sasa watoto wangu wakaka kama wako na manguo mingi. Unaona <laughs> eh, kijana na mimi msichana wakienda kutembelea mama zao walikuwa wanabeba zile manguo zenye nimenunua but wakirudi manguo azirudi. Hiyo ni every time. So Okay. Point of correction. Anytime uh, my son and my second born would go to see their parents she would not want them to wear nice clothes and she would not want them to carry any clothes okay and i used to insist i'm like pack for them clothes let them go it's their clothes so they would go that part is true they would come back without the clothes they went with and we would i would buy i would give her money to buy other clothes she used to be so pissed about it i don't understand why okay we later found out another person was doing other businesses with the baby clothes which is a side story for a different day but she used to be so pissed about it and she never would want them to go with any clothes and i was like yo it's their clothes let them go with it and that is when now shit hit the fan this is the same person who would want to go to a place would want to groom the other kids nicely and then the other ones and I would be pissed about it. I would give money for salon and then and I shook a ving a bit different and a bit different and I was like no they are girls let them have uniformity so that one does not feel bad the other one shook why design or this design shook them the same the stingy guy who was taking care of her, taking care of her mother, taking care of her sister and her sister's husband. Oh, remind me later. What's happening? The YouTube thingy has stopped. Was taking care of her sister and her sister's husband because the whole time of COVID, the sister's husband was not working. He used to work at Masai Mara somewhere. And this time I used to go do shopping and everything and I would come and tell her, please, go out for your mom, take to your mom, go out for your sister. And sometimes the mother would even come and move in and sometimes the sister would come and move in with her children. <sighs> Been a damn move. Anyway, it's fine. Let's continue. How long is it over there? Is it over now already? Okay. Let me school a couple of mothers who are living with stepchildren or children that are not yours. Children are very keen with some small things that you might ignore. So when you do things, children always ask themselves why. That is why even now all my kids, we have order. Sometimes it's an ascending order or descending order in everything we do. I'm like, let's start with Lola, let's go the way too. Let's start with Lola, let's go the way. So it's not, why did you give this one? Why did you do this one? Why did you do this one? So during this time, there's a lot that was happening that I don't want to get into now for the sake of the children, but most of these things I was being told. So when I was being told, I would ask, yo, what is happening? Well, I was given all these excuses and I would come up with solutions. I'm like, okay, let's do this. Let's start with the top, let's go down. Oh, we start down, let's go all the way up. Let's not do this one and this one and this one and this one. You would come, you find another child is looking lugubrious, another one is looking nice. Then you're like, what's happening? Then you're given all these excuses, but story for another day. Wote wanne unaosha pamoja. Sasa juu ile shida sana nikabadilisha, nikaanza kuosha. Huyu mwingine mbele, alafu sasa wangu, wangu nyuma. Tena ikaleta shida. 
kijana anataka kuoga wa kwanza anataka oge na bado yeye ndiye alianza kukomplain yeye ana ushangwa wa, wa mwisho unaona vile watu watoshiki nikajitolea nilipata wale watoto wakiwa wadogo wow you have the audacity to talk about watu wa watosheki really for an 11 that time you probably was like 9 or 8 year old boy must be nice mmoja hata alikuwa anatumia diaper yenye akikuja mimi ndio nilikuwa nabadilisha mpaka saa ile watoto wanaweza kuji kujibadilisha wao mtoto hata anajibadilisha anaenda shule ni mtoto hata anaweza kutengenezea chai kama mko na hakunywe but saa hii mimi ni mama mbaya juu nilikwacha kununua zile nguo hiyo tu ndio kitu yenye ileta shida kwa nyumba so hiyo mambo ikikuja kubadilika hapo hiyo november wow. nika realize obina shaba da sponsor <laughs> eh ameshaka kuchukua watoto wangu anawapeleka huko chini ya maji na anawaambia wakuje kunidanganya how did you know ada ada na biana waliniambia so eh tulikuwa tuna drive tunaenda kilimani biana so ada na biana wamejua sponsor wow okay okay akaniambia mam mm, unajua ile siku nilikudanganya nikamuuliza siku gani ile siku yenye tulikwambia tulikuwa kwa baadhi ya mtu mwenye atujui nikamuuliza mlinidanganya aje dada alituambia Eh tusikwambie tulikuwa vipi utagombana nikamuuliza kwani mlikuwa aniambia tulikuwa kwa mama fulani anaitwa sitaki kutaja jina yake e, anaitwa mama fulani nikamwambia oh okay so nilikuwa na information already kwamba kuna sponsor pale pale ndani so vile anachukua watoto anapeleka kule mama mwingine na yule mama akona pesa so mimi siko important tena juu sina kitu ya kuoffer sina pesa wow wow so i have a sponsor <laughs> okay, it's fine. It's fine. Ah, uh, nikazitu za nyumba naweza kufanya. Sasa hapo ndio nikafungua macho yangu kwamba naweza pia mimi kujitafutia mimi si mimi si kiwete ama eh sijui ni tunyeta mgani. Mimi si mle mambo. Mimi si mle mambo. Wacha niseme tu hivyo. So, nikatoka nikaanza biashara zangu, mambo ikakuwa sawa, but nikajua tu kwamba siku moja nitawachwa peke yangu. Hiyo nayo nilikuwa very sure. I told you to go to school. I started paying for you, you dropped out. I paid for you driving school. I told you to go for English classes that I was gonna pay for. You refused. I paid for you to be taught how to do makeup and everything. Richie's wife can talk about it. She was the one who was teaching you and I was paying so she can teach you. I don't know at what point you dropped somewhere or you refused to do it, but I'm the one who was paying for all that. So don't say you are the one who sat down and thought, I opened a couple of businesses for you that were not working until you decided you wanted to go and look for a job and be employed, of which I even supported. I was like, cool, good stuff, go and do it. Eh, hiyo November, wanaenda game drive, wanapeleka watoto wangu, watoto wananiambia wamekuwa wapi. Siku moja nikakasirika sana na watoto nikawaambia, mkiwa mkitoka hapa mkienda kwa huyo mama, sikuje kuniongelesha. Nilikuwa nimekasirika kabisa mpaka na shout. Then nikaenda job, nikarudi, nikakaa the whole day nikifikiria hiyo story, but nikaona watoto hawana makosa. Ni ni vitu zenye wanaonyeshwa ndio mwenye kuonyesha ndio mbaya si watoto juu there is no way utapeleka mtoto place fulani na umwambie akuje kudanganya ukimwambia kuja kudanganya ina maanisha kitu yenye unafanya ni makosa so nikamachana nayo na mimi nikanyamaza na kaendelea tu kuchukua anga watoto wanapeleka huko wanarudi watoto wanakuja kuniambia tena walikuwa kwa mtu mwingine msichana mwingine different but najiuliza kama mzazi <laughs> hii ni kitu right ya kufanya of course utawadanganya ni friend but so for all the baby mamas out there, there's something you need to remove from your head. <coughs> the mentality for <coughs> any time your baby daddy is with your children, he's going to introduce them to other women. Okay? And then I can introduce kwa mama wake, wasichana wengine, da 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 da. Remove that thing from your head. It makes you look bad and petty and bitter, number one. Number two, your baby daddy is entitled to move on with their life if she is not working. Number three, why do baby mamas always think that if your baby daddy introduces your kids to another woman, you are going to stop being the mother of your children? Why does it worry you? Have you ever heard baby daddy is going like, Who's introduced? If you're worried means you're not doing your own part as a mother. So you feel that there's competition. And why is there competition? Because you're failing on your role. Once you're a mother, you'll always be your mother. Whether I'm total into this, I'm going to 50,000. By the way, my mama is total. And then, I don't know why my mama is always saying that I'm going to be a little bit of 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 a
Watoto si wajinga pia ada for eight years anaweza kujua friend na difference ya mtu mwenye si friend. Mm. Okay na Mombasa akanunuliwa gari yenye yako nayo saa hii. Oh shit. Shit shit. Wow. Wow. I was bought for a car. I bought my car in a showroom called Pacific. It's called Pacific, yes. If you're in Mombasa, if you know anybody in Mombasa, tell them, Nyali, there's a showroom called Pacific. Tell them to go over there and ask for the sales record for how I paid for my car and for what period of time and for when I traded in my Harrier for the Lexus, how much it was, how much the Lexus was, what was the period of time, and when I finished paying for that car. I was bought for a car and I picked a Lexus. <laughs> wow. E. Okay. It's just because I bought you two cars. So you think people are being bought for cars like that? Ah, okay. Okay. After Kubai Wagari, Ilikua Kitu January Hapo, Umakasasa, Hakanza Kukuja Nanguo, the Mustana Panumba. Hakiniambia zinapelekwa orphanage, but naona tu, singo za kupelekwa orphanage. Ah, very nice. This was December, I think, and every December I normally go to an orphanage in Mwiki. It's called Blessed Assurance. This lady is taking care of seven, five children. And when I posted on my social media and said that I was going to that orphanage, a couple of people sent clothes. I don't remember where these clothes were coming from. But if you remember, if you send them to me, please comment below. I don't remember who you are, but there's a lady who sent like a whole sack of clothes. The lady clothes, she was like, I'm a bit uh, bigger, but I'll send a couple of clothes. I'm doing clearance for the house. So please, if you know that you gave me those clothes for the orphanage, the female clothes, please comment below. sana, Because I remember I even sent someone to pick the clothes. Then they were brought to me, I think, then I took them to the house. Why the hell would I take another woman's clothes to my house? Anyway, I am sour. So this script and the boxer script. Simon Edward DVD changer. CD player. Sorry, <laughs> So first of all, that's a lie because myself and this woman, we didn't speak for a year. We were living in the same house. We didn't talk for one year because she fucked up. So let her come out and talk about what she did. And I decided to keep quiet and we spoke through the children for a while. And most of the time we would speak through SMS maybe. And I still served. I did all my duties diligently. I would pray and the kids never suspected anything. Until it now started becoming chaotic, until now the Matusi and the fights and everything in front of the kids and coming home drunk at 10 in the p.m., drinking and driving, and I would be a court word in front of the toys and everything. That happened, now the kids saw that, but before that, kids didn't know anything that was happening because I was silent. I didn't want to engage. I tried to talk. I spoke with her, spoke with the mother spoke with a friend, spoke with my parents, spoke with my grandparents. I'm like, yo, talk to her so she doesn't do this because of the kids. But that didn't happen. So this story is a lie. We were not talking at no given point. I was ever asked, oh, do you what, what? She didn't have the audience. Where was the audience to ask me about that? Then I get happy confidence. Then I get to but na juliza, ni natoka ni tafute na nyumba ingine hiyo pesa kwanza iko wapi. Mwenye ni mraisi, afanya nini? Atoke siyo nitoka ni kalale kwa street, na in the first place ukimileta kwako, uli nipata niko na nyumba yangu, niko na kila kitu, sikuwa ni nateseka, ni nikuwa niko sawa, ni nikuwa na jiprovaidia. Oh, sasa ni mekuleta kwangu, then I'm asking you to leave. Haku, <laughs> haku ongea. Halituma piyo message, siku jibu ni kanyamaza. Mm, kufika March, Siku moja nikiwa jogo, ndiyo 
msichana wa kazi alinikoa akaniambia kwa bila abeba vitu yake yote kwa nyumba kisi ya machi abeba vitu yake yote ameenda okay so the story has been edited out there's like a whole year that is missing in this story what happened for the house story was very simple there was a situation that happened uh, i don't know if i should talk about it i don't know if i would be petty about it okay how how long is it just say how long have we four five for five minutes shoot that's long how long is it remaining on the other side is it still spacious is it showing space okay so i can continue so okay this okay okay so the time is there so we can continue okay so now let me talk so what happened the story that's been edited out is this so during covid uh she got a job in rongai and when she got the job things changed friends mindset mentality and everything so she would come to the house at around 10 p.m 11 p.m sometimes she'd even sleep outside i would be in the house with the kids i always go back home unless i'm performing out of town but every day of the week diligently i always go back home i always sit with the kids i will eat with them we will play we'll watch a movie sometimes they'll go to bed then i'll watch a movie until like midnight or something and then i'll go and sleep at around 3 or 4 a.m because that was my schedule then i didn't have an early morning so one time during this COVID time, I was home for a minute. I remember I probably I'd just been laid off from nation or something. And she was working, but I was still paying all the bills, including the house help and everything for everybody in the house. She had her money, which I told her, don't buy anything in the house. Don't even spend a shilling in the house. Because remember, back of her mind, that house in Omoja, what was said even when she was moving to this house i told her pick your stuff everything give it to your mother come to my house the way you are i'll buy everything of which i did so what happened during this time when she got the job coming late attitude started changing and tabias of course i'm a man i can see what is happening and when i see what is happening i decided to say keep quiet because remember i've always told her many times in the relationship like yo if you happen to find someone and you fall in love let me know i will let you go because i don't love you I've never loved you. I don't think I will. We are together here because of the children. Ask her. She will say, if someone gets to interview her, ask her. For nine years, I never told her I love you, not even once. And she asked me, you never told me I love you. I'm like, I don't want to lie to you. It's not like that. The person I loved was the one who fucked up. If you know my other stories, you'll join one plus one and two. You're more very sure of which everything was well known. So what happened during this time was... I was home, I was chilled. Uh, one time during the COVID, things were happening. Okay, some guys just walked in now, my attention kidogo. But now we are back here. Okay, so this time during COVID, I was chilled at home. Nothing was happening. So one time, I asked myself, since I'm always in the crib, and she's always coming home at around 11 p.m., how far is Rongai? I'm like, cool, so what do I do? Go to Rongai, park your car somewhere, when she leaves work, follow the car, see how long the distance from Rongai to your place is. I said, cool. I'm still sick, remember, I think I had COVID. I'm not sure because I was never tested, but I was very weak. I remember the household man used to wake me up to drink porridge because the, part, the other person didn't really care, but it's fine, I'm not complaining. So I left, drove towards uh, Rongai. I got an accident at Inda. So because I go through City Stadium way, so I thought I'd break my car, but there was someone in front of me, so I bumped on them. So they got out of the car, looked at me, he asked me, why are you driving and you're drunk? I'm like, no, I'm not drunk, I'm just sick. And the person said, ah, okay, if you're sick, nothing major, I'll fix my bumper, you fix your bumper. I said, cool. I had my hurry, I drove all the way to Rongai. I'm very tired. I had a black trench coat, there's COVID time, I have my mask on and everything. <clears throat> so, when I got to uh, Rongai, I didn't know where she she would work but i knew the business name drove around one guy for a while okay let me let me, let me forward the story so that it's faster i'm talking too slow drove around one guy didn't find the place so later when i was around i'll show the place so i see the place i go over there i drive around the building town look for a car because the idea was i park somewhere i can see the car so i can follow the car i didn't see the car so what do i do i have to go in there and find out where the car is so i parked my car walked in there checked around spoke kidogo she saw me came so i bought 
couple of clothes they were selling clothes bought a couple of clothes for all the kids then when i leave in she's like do i see you off i'm like cool we get to the doorstep she's like uh to the doorstep for the shop then i'm like uh where is your car so we can put these things in your car then you'll take the kids i'm not going home now then she says i cannot leave now why because the cctv then i'm like cool so i leave but i'm like where is the car she's like i told you i can't park the car in front here because i kept being called yo are you recording here are you seeing me because i can see mm. your attention is on the other side <laughs> uh, i'm like cool so it's behind the building she said yeah it's behind the building i can't park here because i'm being called to move move to shift the car all the time i say cool so what do i do when i leave where do i go behind the building there's no car i come back again i'm like yo you've told me the car is behind the building and there is no car because now i'm starting to sense eh, something is off she tells me, no, 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 it's not behind the building, it's this side for cooperative. So if you're in Rongai, you know where cooperative is, Club Legend, cooperative. It's that side of cooperative, you know, da, 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 a lot of Kiswahili. I'm like, cool. So when I leave, because I've driven around this building a couple of times, I'm like, let me just walk. Maybe I'm the one who's driving too fast. So I get to the car, put on my coffee, I put on my mask on. I start walking, slowly going towards cooperative. I get to cooperative, look around, there is no car. I start walking back, coming back toward my car. Guess who I bump into? Ha! Boom! She's here. I'm right here. I'm like, ah, uh, what's happening? She sees me. She freezes. So I go hold her and I start walking with her. Then she told me, I'm like, ah, sorry, sorry. Sorry, my love. I hug her like this. So I walk like brother and sister. So I have my hand here. We walk. We walk a bit. It's like 50 meters, I think, to cooperative. Then I'm like, so this is cooperative bank with the parking lot. Where is the car? Then she starts giggling. <laughs> I don't know if I should tell you the truth. Am I should lie to you? I'm like, just say the truth. You know, I like the truth. Hit me. Then she says, truth of the matter is, uh, I didn't park the car here. I actually use the car as a taxi because I'm trying to raise money to go to the States. So every day I'm given a thousand bob by the person who's driving the car. Then I'm like, oh, so in my head, I'm like, yo, that's brilliant because if the car can give you a thousand bob every day in 30 days, that's 30 G's. The sad bit or the weird bit is I've never seen this money. I've never seen where it is. I've never seen what it's done. And remember, I was asked for money for the state story. And I was like, yo, you'll be conned in Nairobi. Of course, okay, she got conned. Side story, a story for a different day. And I was like, you'll be conned in Nairobi. If the person who's telling you they're going to work on the visa and everything, tell them to help you work on those papers and everything for you to go and work in the States. If everything is confirmed and you have your air ticket, I will personally give them the car and the logbook. They can just keep it. What the car, I don't care, but I'll give you. But don't think that I'll give you money. She wanted 80000 to go and pay someone to try and access for you the visa. This is Nairobi, of which now leads to the story for. You remember, I told you I needed this money. You did not give me for the visa, da, 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 da. So I'm using the car as taxi to raise money to go to them. I'm like, beautiful. But I didn't tell her, I keep quiet. So I said, oh, so what is happening is this. Uh, I've been told that there's someone who's being seen with the car. So I'm playing along. You know, I'm going with the flow. Like, I've been told there's someone who's being seen with my car. And uh, I didn't know. He's like, no, 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 no. Uh, it's even an old man. There are two of them. I don't know. There's someone else. Da, 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 and everything. So they're the ones who are driving the car now. I'm like, okay, cool. So where is the car? I think, oh, he was supposed to drop it in the evening. He normally works during the day. He drops it in the evening. And then I come home with it. Remember, I bought this car. I pay for insurance for this car. I fuel this car. So I know the car is not PSV. The insurance is not PSV. So I say, okay, cool. So every action has consequences. She's like, what are the consequences? She started walking next to me, talking. Like, oh, una I remember that statement very well. Then I'm just walking. So remember, I'm, I'm not hurt. I'm not even pissed. I'm just... I'm like, yo, it's now my moment to leave. I've wanted to leave for the last so many years. I've always been waiting for my kids to grow. And then, please, at least I can go in peace. She's like, oh, talks. I'm just like, uh, every action has consequences. And I walk back. Now she's walking back. Remember, the time I said, let's leave, let's go put the clothes in the car. There was like, the CCTV, I can't leave before work. But now, she's left. So I get to their workplace. The railing was down, so they were actually closing. Get in the car. I get in the car. I drive to Lamington to see a friend. After that, I go to Miale to buy Miale special because I'm sick and I'm like, I can't eat. So, what am I craving for Miale special? Buy Miale special. 
get back home. That's like two hours. The whole circuit, and then I'm driving slowly. I get to the house, she's not there. Uh, I chill with the kids. We eat, they go to bed, and then she showed up later. Of course, I remained in the sitting room as usual until three in the morning, went to bed, slept. In the morning, I had movements. Okay, by the way, when she got the job, things changed. Now she started applying a lot of makeup and everything, and she started posting booty pics on Instagram, which I was happy for. I was like, yo, man, you finally gonna get somebody. And finally gonna leave me. I'm like, oh, yeah. Anyway, side story. So makeup, everything, so I would sit there. So that morning I had movements. I got up, looked, she was applying her makeup, dress, nini, tight trousers, everything. Good stuff, baby girl. So I'm chill, then I'm like, ah, oh, so, uh, you told me that I was doing taxi. So where's the evidence? Then she said, eh, I have not some messages. So when a car is doing taxi, when you give someone a car to do taxi, you write a contract with the person, you love a picture of the person, you'll have what, you'll have statements of money and everything. Then she's like, uh, the car I was doing taxi and have a pesa. I'm like, okay, cool, show me. She told me I will be late to work. I was like, yo, okay. Kept quiet. She finished, left. Okay, how long does it take to show a pesa statement? Anyway, side story. Went. I left, went to see uh, my, my cousin Dicap. We sat with Dicap, told Dicap the whole story and everything. Came back. She came back as usual, smelling of al oozing of alcohol as usual, late as usual. Chilled, the kids have already gone to bed. Chilled, this time she could not sleep. She's very fidgety now. She used to come and she would just black out because you know when you, when you, you, you drank alcohol, of course. So she came. She did whatever I would hear on phone and everything until like midnight. So midnight, when I went to the bedroom, I was like, yo, so you said in the morning you'll be late for work, but now you have the time. So can I see the Mpesa statements for the person who's been driving the car the taxi driver? She told me I've deleted. Who deletes Mpesa messages and everything? Still, there's Mpesa statement to be printed and everything. So I said, okay, cool. So I told her, listen, uh, the book you're reading from, I probably wrote it. So what I want you to do is this. I'm giving you one week. Figure out everything. Create any, fabricate any lie that you need to tell me. So that you can prove that the car was being used as a taxi. Remember all this time, I'm looking for a way out. I've found a loophole. I'm like, yo, now this is the way to go. She said, cool. Fast forward, the week ended on Saturday. She was at, she was not going to work, she was going for a funeral for the cousin. The cousin's daughter had died in school. Rest, RIP. Uh, so she woke up at around maybe eight, nine, some, somewhere there was seven in the morning. And then she woke me up, she was like, babe. I'm like, what's up? She's like, can we talk? Remember, we've not been talking really. This story for the car is what made us talk. Before that, we were not talking. I was being talked to. <laughs> I, like babe can we talk i'm like yeah, yeah. she like how long are you gonna continue like this i'm like like what you know we're not talking and everything i was like no today is the last day i'm just waiting for the evidence and then we're good to go and then what did she say she said ah so what do you want i'm like i just want the evidence that i told you to check she's like oh okay cool she took her phone got up stood i'm still in bed i'm seated down I was watching netflix she's like so to tell you the truth the car was not doing taxi now story is flipping again. This is like the third time I think the story is flipping. I'm like, okay. So what was the car doing? She's like, I was actually getting a loan with the car. So that day you had come, the car had gone for valuation. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So the evidence, she now has this confidence. Which evidence, which evidence do you want? Okay, uh, 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 messages. Then she got her phone. She put her password. Okay, so since I knew her, her phone never had password, but since she got, she, uh, she got the job, phone outside the having password, which I didn't even have a problem with. I was good. I was happy. Something was happening in that direction. Anyway, she unlocked the phone and then she held it to me like this. She tumbled, her phone would be there. The kids, everybody would have it now. She held it to me so that I would read. Okay. So I took the phone. So I took the phone. I checked the message that she had shown me. So there's a conversation somewhere there. Let me talk to Dika. The one calling. Yo, Dikap. See, let me call you back in a few. I'm shooting an interview. Uh, who? 
Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. I've put it on airplane mode because I'm shooting an interview. Ah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So she holds the phone. She's standing next to the board, holds the phone to me like this. So I'm sitting here with my phone like this. So I'm looking at the message. So I read the message. I read everything, conversation. I'm like, okay. Then she's like, you happy now? So I told you. Then she leaves with the confidence. Ding, ding. She goes to make sausages for the kids. I'm like, cool. I uh, think she was going to buy or make something like that. So I'm sitting on the bed. Then he hits me. Yo, I've seen something. Then I'm like, should I call her? I remember, I'm still sickly. I'm like, no, she'll just come back. Later, of course, she comes back to the bedroom to do her makeup and everything so she can go to the funeral. And then... So, so when this is happening, I'm like, uh, let me see something on that phone. She's like, see what? I'm like, let me, I, I just saw something. I see what, 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 what do you want to see? What do you want to see? I'm like, just show me the text or something. You I'm like, then she takes the phone. <clears throat> okay. So she takes the phone and then opens again, comes and holds it to me. And then I look at it. Then I tell her, yo, so it's true here you're saying the car had gone for valuation, but the problem is, this evidence you're showing me is one day late. So the conversation had started on Monday. I had gone to where she was working on Sunday, and I told her, I think, on Tuesday, that I need the evidence for the whole, she takes the whole week to get the evidence. So now being shown evidence, that's one day late. The evidence starting on Monday, the conversation, but on Wednesday is when they're talking about valuation. And the person saying, bring the car tomorrow on Thursday for valuation. So I, told, I tell her, okay, so this guy, you're being told here, take this car for valuation on Thursday. And then uh, she says, no, 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 no. She's asking me that I should send money for valuation. I'm like, if she's asking for money for valuation, she could have just written here, send money for valuation on Thursday. Nilio koto na gear five. We, you know, I've always been forgiving you. So you what? You've been disrespecting me. You've been doing what? You've been cheating on me. I'm like, yo, I've been cheating. I'm like, what? I'm sitting on the bed. Remember, I'm sick. I can't do anything. So I'm here. I was told. I was told a lot of things. A lot of things. And then she left. This day I was having a meeting at Westgate, remember, for that jeep over there. So I finished what I was doing, got up pole pole, prepared later, da 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 da, of course, as usual. No, actually, this day when she left, she made breakfast in the sausages and then put them on the dining table. So when I got up, I just found them. I ate. Yeah, I know. Took a shower, prepared, left. She had said she was going for a funeral. By the time she left the house, it was around noon. The shags is far. And I'm like, funeral, shags. And I'm like, no, it's not adding up. So I said, let me just go to the sister's place. So at least later when she'll say, I was at my sister's place, there's evidence that she was not there. So I get the sister's place. I find she's seated down there. Beating stories, her, the sister, the sister's husband, da, 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 da. I enter the house. I don't see Lola. I'm like, so I say, how are you? Then the guy replies, we're good. And I say, where's Lola? Then Lola is back. And they Dada mia! Smiles, laughter, whatever. Then I look at her. Then I say, oh, this is the funeral you are going to. It must be nice. Then I walk out. She walks out after me, follows me to the gate. I left my car in the gate. I enter the car. She looks at me. I drive off. I go to Westgate, do my meeting, da, 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 da. So that's the story that happened that was left in between. Then the conversation for the house. We had a conversation. We were chatting. And she was like, oh, so later... After the drama and everything, oh, I'm sorry for what, what, which I really didn't, I didn't really care. Oh, I'm sorry, da, da, da. So I said, cool. If you're sorry, I remember we were texting. Remember, we're still not talking. I'm like, if you're sorry, this is what you're going to do. Since this is what you've been doing, uh, if you want to stay, I'm taking back the car and the phone. But if you choose to leave, you can keep the car and the phone. This is at around 10 in the p.m., we are texting. She's in the bedroom in the sitting room. I'm with the kids. Lola leaves, goes to the bedroom. Lola comes back and tells me, Daddy, na to Nahama. I'm like, yo, to Nahama? What's happening? I just see things being packed and things just being moving. So I'm just sitting there. I'm like, okay, this is going to 11, uh, 10, 30, going to 11 at night. Packs everything and then leaves. Remember the choices were two. If you choose to stay, I'll take the car and the phone. Okay, I, didn't, I don't need the car. I don't need the phone. I was going to hold it for about one week, then I would return it anyway. Because we were doing this for the kids, remember. 
So she decided to pick the car in the phone and she parked and then she left and then went and told all my friends that kicked out with my kids and everything and everything. They left. Every day the house help would call me and tell me, yo, Lola is crying, Lola wants to come back home, Lola is crying, Lola wants to come back home. So I called my mom and I'm like, yo, Lola is really crying, you know, so I miss Lola, I miss the kids, I miss Ada, what can I do? My mom's like, yo, we were told that she's not coming back no matter what happens. I'm like, this can't happen. Let me tell her. Mom is like, even if you tell her, she'll not come back. I'm like, yo, mom, <laughs> I know my ways. Mom is like, okay, cool. I made one text. I think I did a text or something. She was like, cool, they're coming back tomorrow. The following day that she was supposed to come back, she told me, she called me, she's like, she's still at Jobo, so I go pick the kids. So I go pick the kids at a friend in Kilimani. I go pick. Now, everything she had packed and left with, this is like a couple of, it was not a lot of days, like three, four days, I think. So I go pick all these things now, start carrying them from the house to the car and everything. You know, she's at work so that my kids can come back to the house. This familiar territory for the kids. Come back home. By the time we're just getting home like this, she calls me, she's in an accident. Where? In Rongai. Good guy, of course. I leave my car. Rongai, there's traffic. I get on a dubi. Ride all the way to Rongai. I get two drunkards of Gonga themselves. The other guy was drunk. She was drunk. So later, she told me, that so the story was which she also changed she said she would leave the office and they would sit with her friends in the car and drink a little bit and then later when i inquired more she changed the story she was like oh there's a bar that is opposite the workplace so they would leave the workplace and go with their friends to that bar and drink and then that's when she would drive home okay side story so I go there, find two drunkards, case, case, case. We go to the police station, da, 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 da. Nothing happened. We left the police station around 1 or 2 a.m. in the morning with a taxi, came back home. Later, after we, the guy refused to pay, I decided to make the car. And I was like, since she's been drinking, so listen, I'm making your car. And remember this time we're having all these situations. I'm like, yo, so I'm making for you a car, but you're going to have to pay me back. She hasn't paid me until now. So you'll pay me back and then... Uh, uh that's how i'm gonna make your car so i made the car back to everything fine everything da, 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 da. i followed both the tires that are burst lights everything paint job everything did hand it over the car so things are going nice so one day she tells me from nowhere i said you know the lady the owner of the building where i was working told me that uh she wants me to marry the son in my head i'm like manager manager finally <laughs> So, she told me that if I happen to marry the son, she's going to give me land in Karen. Then I'm like, uh huh, some sitters over there. Uh -huh. She's like, so I organized, I left to work, we went to see the land, and then I came back, and then I was told that uh, this guy had another lady that they had given a fully furnished apartment, then this lady used to bring men to that house, and then her things were being thrown from the balcony. So, in my head, I'm like, hmm. So you were told you're going to marry the son of your landlady and you're going to be given land and you actually left and you had gone to see the land. You came back and did your research on the person and found out whatever was happening. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I'm just getting the story. So these are just side stories or whatever. Anyway, that one didn't really affect anything. So that is the gap that was left that was being not, you're not being told. And also during this period for work in Rongai and everything, this is now when the physical abuse and the verbal abuse and everything was happening, even to the kids and to myself. And she's not saying, and I'm going to share the audios because I recorded a couple of audios for that. So I'm going to see, and I'll just share the audios, part one, part two, part three, all of that, because I have a lot of those, those moments. Anyway, let's go back to this. It's long, eh? Oof. What? So, this is very unnecessary, man. This is bullshit. Okay, anyway, the reason why I'm doing this is because when she talks like this, and then people in the corporate world will sit down and go like, Obina did A, B, C, D. Not knowing, there's nothing to this. Like, if I ask myself, what's the purpose of doing this interview? Is it because someone has stopped you from seeing your kids? Someone has stopped taking care of their kids? Or someone has done what? It's just about reputation. You want to charm up for the reputation, so you're gonna do or say anything possible to do it. That's the purpose, or you want fame or clout or anything. 
this interview is pointless this reply is pointless but i have to because people are telling me we don't keep quiet they might keep quiet the more people having these perceptions of whatever happened okay so i used to leave the house uh, Richie G! I just spoke about you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's on a positive note. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Yeah, so uh, what happened about this house situation was when the physical abuse got out of hand, I started to go and stay at my cousin's place, that's the cup, or my brother's place. All right? Then when I got the job at Kids, I got a house. And I bought a mattress and I started afresh. I could not move with the kids to that house because the house was not furnished. But I could stay there because the only way I would wake up in the morning, this is the time we're doing the interviews, remember. The only way I would do these interviews fresh in the morning is if I would live somewhere where it's peaceful. So, because my brother stays far and my cousin stays far, they stay those sides for feather. I said, let me stay next to the workplace. So it's easy for me to wake up in the morning, set an alarm, wake up at four, get to Jobo, do the interview, come back. During that whole period, that's what was happening. I was not staying in anybody's house. Then later, when now I started buying things slowly, and then when I'd fully finished the house, that's when I went and took everybody, my other kids. And she called me and texted me and told me that I should go and pick everything from the house so that my remaining kids can sleep on the floor so they can know that their father is no longer in the picture. And I'm like, no, why are you doing that? I've left everything for the kids. It's not even for you. That's the life they're used to. That's what I want to happen. And she was like, no, no, no. Come and pick these things. You know, I want them to sleep on the floor so they can know that you're no longer here. Anyway, side story. <laughs> That's a lie because every day when I would leave work, I would go and chill with the kids, do whatever, until like around 10 when they go to bed is when I would leave. Ah, oh. wake sasa. Kurudi Nairobi sasa. Akakuwa sasa ametoka kwa ile nyumba akapanga nyumba ingi. Ingine yake sasa ya kuishi. Na akakuja watoto wakaletwa na mama sasa mother in law na wakaenda kwa nyumba yake. So mama akitoka pale kwa nyumba alinidanganya. Eh, eh mama ada na travel leo. Obia ameniambia ni mdrop hiyo watoto na sijui ni wapi na mdrop hiyo. After one week, so si na watoto wana communicate na hawa wengine. So mama bado wako wapi? Nikajua nilichezwa but ni sawa tu juu. Mama hako ana shida na follow instructions. Aya, vile Obila alihama na hawa watoto wengine sasa halafu shule zikafunguliwa. First, nilikuwa ni transfer hawa watoto wangu kwenda kwa shule nyingine. Shule nyingine alikuwa na insist tupeleke watoto nilikataa juu ni mbali na place ninaishi siwezi amsha mtoto saa kumi aende shule na huyu mtoto kwanza ni mdogo ataanza kukataa shule nikatrai kurizo na yeye kwa messages akaniambia mimi ni selfish akaniambia nitoke nihame niende nikae karibu na shule nikamwambia iwezekani ishapata shule e, watoto wataenda hiyo place akasema ni sawa mm unaona wamehamia shule mpya so na try kutafuta ile njia yenye ni comfortable kwa watoto na kwangu pia so basi hii shule inakuja kuchukua watoto home five Five. So, Richie, you wanna shoot? Yeah, no, no, You're no. shooting here. No. Oh, okay. If you wanna shoot, just let me know. I talk about them. So, brother, I'm around four. So, I imagine I'm talking about four. Now, after that, I'm ten or six. Now, I'm five years. We talk about the mother of So, I'm talking about money. When I'm talking about sacrifice every day, I'm talking about the mother. See, I'm talking sacrifice too. Ni ninja too much. I have to bond. Now, when I'm talking about the mother, I'm going to suffer. So that's a lie. First of all, she got a school. I paid even for transport. Only to be told they're not using the transport. She told me now she wants to hire a private transport. She sent the number. I paid that guy. The guy was also not picking them. Story, she's now the one who's dropping them. I'm like, I paid for the bus. I paid for this one. Then now you're the one. Why did I pay for this? That is how it happened. Uh, here week, nearly try to find driver, personal driver, how we are now apeleka. Mm, mm. nae, nika tumia obina namba. Kesho yake nika realize badu anachukua watoto, the same time. Nika mwambia, usitumia ule mse kwanza pesa, nime realize anachukua watoto, same time na school bus. So here, ituni wapeleke. Haka niongele shatena vibaya. Oh, sijui nilikuwa nisha, lipa na nisha ungea na ule mtu, haka niambia badu aja, 
hajatumiwa do but juni mimi anasikia tu aliongelesha vibaya ameshanidharau anataka tu aliongelesha vibaya mm hiyo sorry ya school bus ikaisha so watoto kujoin shule on tuesday ikafika friday na ujue bado watoto wako na wanafikiri baba yao ako tu pale ndani ya nyumba juu anakujanga so ile moment anakuja kwa nyumba akienda kila mtu anasimama kwa balcony analia watoto wenyewe yeah, watoto wenyewe plus hata na mimi juu nilikuwa najua tu ita happen but ili happen so sudden nataka mimi mwenyewe nikashtuka anakuja anaka na watoto ikifika 7 anatoka anaenda lola alikuwa analia kwa balcony na fili nitoke kumbebeleze pia nilitrai kumbebeleza kwa messages kumpigia ni vile lola analia then nikamwambia kama ni ngumu basi hata wacha kukuja for a while ndio mtoto wazoee akaniambia atazoea tu but ule mtoto mpaka saa hii kutoka mati saa hii kwa august mtoto bado mpaka saa hii hajazoea bado analia eh mimi mwenyewe bado inani affect hiyo time ilikuwa inani affect sana nikiona watoto wangu wina wa affect akaniambia hakuna kitu anaweza fanya isha 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 so ikabidi sasa ni ni accept juu hii kushinda na dia every day na shinda the whole day siko sawa kichwa inaniuma ndio kushinda nafikiria sana nikasema tu lazima ni accept na life life yenele so shida ikaanzia hapo akanitumia message kwamba atanipa nyumba for six months shopping for six months rent for six months na hata wacha zile vitu pale ndani ya nyumba yeye mwenyewe kusema alituma message in return anataka awe anaona watoto of which siku alimkataza kuona wale watoto ni vile watoto wakianza ile shule unakumbuka nimekwambia wali join shule on tuesday so Let's do this. <laughs> this thing is painful to watch. It's a uh, it's a very unnecessary situation. It's just so many lies and so many omitted stories. So let me not say a lot of other things because of the kids i'm sure the kids will watch this my kids watch and by the way everything that i've said until now the kids know because they were there so every other detail that they don't know let's leave it there but the ones they know they already know this thing is too painful for, to watch let's hope she's gotten what she wanted and if there's any other person who also wants to interview her feel free give her the fame she wants, give her the light she wants, maybe to help her career or her path or something. I don't know what she's trying to achieve from this. But you didn't stop me from seeing the kid. If you guys knew the battles we've had, just so I can get to see the kid. It's fine. It's okay. Uh, okay. So I can see here it's already 29 minutes. The video is like 55 minutes. I will not manage to watch all of it. It's very irrelevant. I've watched Kidog I've tried to on gear, but the con is too long, man. So I'm gonna share a couple of uh, couple of audios. And also if it's the first time you're watching this and you don't know where it began, just Google baby mama drama and then after googling that, uh, this is going to be the first episode of Baby Mama Drama on my channel, it's called Obina TV Extra. I have a couple of other men who have been in very bad relationships with the baby mamas. The baby mamas don't want them to see their children for one reason or another, but it's normally just for selfish reasons. It's never even about the child. So I'm going to be sitting down with those men and we're going to be talking about them. And after we talk about them, we're going to be going to children's court and we'll make sure that we hold these women to book. We'll bring them to book and uh, we'll make sure that the father is in the lives of the children. So we stop, ha we stop having men being called deadbeat dads because there are some women who want to hold on to the kids and then they just want the men to keep sending the money but you don't get to see your kids. Some even send money, you get, don't see your kids but you're still insulted. Some, you don't even know where your kids are or what is happening and you really want to be in your kids' lives. So my email is the same tvobinagmail.com. Hello, your boy. Let's sit down and let's talk. This is the first episode of Baby Mama Drama. Uh, let's see how it goes because that's what's going to happen. But now, if she decides to stop me again from seeing the children, 
now I'll decide to do what I do best. But I'm gonna be in my kids' lives by force, by fire. So that's it. So it's very unnecessary. Man, I don't even believe you're even talking about this. Like, what's the point? That's what I don't get. Like, what's the point for all this? Like, it's fine. You can cut the video. I do what I imagine. Na new yo. Ni mama ada. Who am I na happy? Ni kwa presenter Ali. Oh, oh, you may watch your interview. Ah, and don't you want to shoot what I say easy? Don't you want to shoot say easy reaction or video? Na dala. Apa na tumbi ni lalikwa na nishutia. So I'm a danga nyaji. Alisi. Alisi. Ule ule mtoroka akikuwa na member ya ada. Ati alikuwa na ana ana kuhipia rent. Wow. Aya. This will be said that it will be said that I I prepped this guy to say this. This guy is eleven. He knows everything. This guy is here. Busho. Busho. Uko 12. Uko 12. Uko 12. Uko 12. Uko 12. Mm. So it will be said that. Bring me the camera. It will be said that I prepped. Oh, I told them to talk like this. You are 12. Sindio. Yes. So, would you want to jokes? Aya. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I want to talk to you. Now, I want to let a ladies for Numba. Wow, listen at the at the Alipoca hospital at the even a marriage with Molecudana. Uh, ma mangoes in his corner, my rash ningi, Ali Dasaria Kawambia Mwende Mukatoi. So it's okay. Uh, I don't want to talk about this with you. Of all the people, you you know what happened because it's not healthy. So you you you've seen you know what happened. Nyamaza nayo, it's okay. Eh. Mm, nayo. See, you're no longer there. Not that. It's fine. Whatever people decide to think, it's up to them. It's not my job to make people think good things about me. It's my job to be a good person and let it move. Whatever someone decides to think is up to them. Uh, yeah, yeah, where's your sister? So, uh, my watch. Uh, Surely, this is I'm going to watch your interview. Okay. Okay. A bit later, kidogo. Let me finish and then I'll come. Probably. Now it's going to nine. No, I might not. I might. I might not. It's a quarter to nine. So let me see if I can leave now. So I find we can just go to bed. Love you. Ah, I love you. Bye. <laughs> ah, stop it. I told you to stop it. Stop. Bye. Yeah. There you go. Mm. Wangwana. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Is there anybody here who has a child? Yeah. yeah. You have a child. Mm. You're married or baby mama? <laughs> Sura you are married. You're married. Yeah. Good for you. So for the other girls who are here, Tafadali, by the time you're getting pregnant, be sure you want to be pregnant. Okay. Then be sure you have money to take care of that child in case the father is dead. And if I told the father wants to be in the life of that child, let the father be in the life of that child. And for the men here, if you have a child, please go and take your child. Go and take care of your child. Okay? Go and look for your child. Find ways to be in the life of your child. 
And if you don't have a child here, young man, usipe mutu mimba. Unless you are sure you want to be there. Wengine hata kuambia ati wao wanapata mimba ni watakwambia beba I'm safe. Oh baby you know I'm good to go you know beba got you. Don't take that nonsense. Toka na watoto wako kwa so. Kwa hiyo mimi because the people are involved bro you're fucked. Utapigwa vita unnecessary for unnecessary things okay? So usiingie tu hivyo bila makondiko bro. Kondiko very important. Toka na watoto wako. Yes. Wanapoka wazuri sana. Ile time ya mauta mu. So I want to tell young people before you are 27 you have no business marrying anybody you have no business having children you have no business moving with someone in their house before you are 27 after 27 decide but between 21 to 27 look for money strategize but if you already have children now just take care of them and don't have another one yes Imetosha sasa mtoke kwangu. Hebu tutoke kwa tumbili